We got another crazy fast external storage enclosure for your Mac or your PC, and this one's got some special features built into it. Stay tuned for that. Welcome back to the channel. If you've watched my channel before, you know I do a ton of different videos on extremely fast external storage for your Mac or your PC. And this is no different, but it actually is. This one's got some special hidden features built into it, which makes it worth the money that you want to spend on this one. So sit back and relax and stay tuned. I think you're going to love this enclosure. Let's get into it. All right, let's just cut to the chase. So what makes this different? And then we're going to get into a whole bunch of stuff, so stay tuned for that. What this basically does differently though is it has active cooling and passive cooling built into it. Now the other enclosures I talked about were thin sheets of metal usually around the SSD with the thermal pad on it. This one's totally different. This one's got an active 30 millimeter fan. And we'll, we'll show you that in a second. But it's also got uh, extremely thick copper piping that goes through it. Basically touches the heat pipe to the actual SSD drive, brings it out through the fan, the heat. So it actually is an active system of cooling this thing and the metal around it is very thick as well. So it's definitely doing a good job there where other ones didn't really have all this tech built into it. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the build quality of the product and the model number and stuff. And then I'm going to go ahead and at the end of the video, I'm going to do some tests and put this through some tests. I'm going to do a black magic speed test, which should go you know, fairly quickly. But then I'm going to do a 10 gigabyte, moving 10 gigabytes of files over, do a test there, then 50 gigabytes of files, then 100 gigabytes of files. And finally, I'll do that 100 back to back just to see if this thing gets hot, slows down, is the active cool, cooling working for it. So those are all cool tests we're going to do in a second. But first, let's get into the product itself. All right, for starters, this is called the Graw Gear USB 4.0 enclosure. I'll show you close-ups of the box there. The thing about this is this is for an M.2 drive. It's the 2280 size. You gotta have that size. It's for PCIe Gen 4 times 4 NVMe SSD. So it's an M.2 NVMe drive, not a SATA drive there. Keep that in mind. And I'll get into the drive that I use in my testing. I always use the same drive just to kind of keep apples to apples on this thing. But overall, let me just talk about, so what's in the box of this thing? So this comes with a USB cable. It's a you know, 40 gigabit per second cable. And I'll show you some close-ups of that as well. It also comes with a small screwdriver. Unfortunately, it's proprietary, so you gotta, it's got some kind of weird head on it, but definitely you have to unscrew this and there's four screws to get into it. And it's got a little thermal pad that comes with it and you may wanna upgrade that, but it's still got it at least. And it's got the user manual and stuff, but that's really all you need here uh, in the box. All right, this thing is made out of solid aluminum and I'll show you close-ups. It's pretty incredible, very, very heavy and I'll give you the dimensions also. Take a look at the dimensions if you wanna see it. I'll put it up on the screen right now. That's the dimension, so it's not that big but it's really a solid piece of aluminum. It's, it's heavy in the hand. But beyond that, it's got, and I, oh, and I show you the, when I open it up here, it's got that, you know, it's got the, the copper piping going through it. And it's really something different because that copper pipe, piping touches the thermal pad and then it brings it out to the front of it uh, onto the top of the enclosure. And there's a fan up there. It's a 30 millimeter fan. And the thing about this fan is it's super quiet. I'll show you a, kind of a video of it. When I actually plugged this in, I didn't even know it was running. I had to look at it and it, it, it runs so smooth and so quiet, you cannot hear it at all that it basically you can't tell it's running. But when I unplug it, I can see this, the fan actually stops. So it's actually very quiet and, and very, you know, it's, it's a lighter fan, but it's very smooth. There's no like jittery vibrations or anything like that, which I like. And I think it's doing a good job of cooling, which we'll get into in a little bit. All right, and like my other enclosures I tested, I'm gonna be using the Western Digital SN770 for my test drive. And I'll show you a close up of that drive as well that's in the enclosure. But you know, in a nutshell, you just basically unscrew the four screws. You install the drive. There's one screw that you gotta screw in to actually make sure the drive sits flush. And again, it's the 2280 size, and you're all ready to go. Now, one disclaimer when I do the test later is I'm doing this drive, it's the SN770. I think you might get faster speeds than I even got, and I got some pretty fast speeds, stay tuned for that. But you might even get faster speeds if you use something like a Western Digital 850X or something. They don't really recommend any drives on, on their, you know, in their documentation on the, on the Amazon page. I'll have links to all this on Amazon. But definitely, you know, overall, I'm using a little bit slower drive, but I'm still getting extremely fast speeds. But I wanna test this versus the other tests I've done for my other videos, so I'm using the SN770. The device is backwards compatible with USB 3.2, 3.1, 3.0, 2.0. But if you're using that, obviously you're gonna get a lot slower speeds. What you wanna do is it says, be, be sure to use a USB 4.0 interface or at least a Thunderbolt 3 or Thunderbolt 4 interface. If you're using like a 10 gigabit interface or something, not even the right cable or something, you're always gonna get slower speeds. And also my tests coming up, keep in mind that if you test on a Windows PC or test on any other device with a different drive, your tests are gonna be different because this is a one exact test I'm showing you with a specific drive. And I'm actually gonna be connecting to an M1 iMac right over here. This is gonna be an M1 base model iMac. And it does have obviously a Thunderbolt port on the back. 
All right, so a couple things here. Now, on their website, they say this is capable of up to 3750 on the reads and 3600 on the writes. Now, obviously, that's with the correct drive that they have, and I do think it's capable, and we'll get into that in a second. I do think you can probably reach those speeds with this, but we're going to do our test now, and then we're going to come back and talk about the cooling and all that stuff and see how, how it actually did perform. Let's do the test right now in Blackmagic. Here's the first test. We're getting 3,112 basically on the writes, 2,934 on the reads. We'll do it one more time. So around 3,100 again, and then 2,936 on the writes there. So as you can see, that's actually really fast for the SN770. It's actually a pretty good score there, but sometimes when you're doing the actual data transfer, you can actually get faster speeds. And we're going to test that right now with doing all these data transfer speeds. Let's check it out. All right, here's the first one. The first one's gonna actually be 10 gigabytes per second, 10 gigabytes of data we're gonna transfer. This is really hard to do, but let me go ahead and just drop this into the drive over here. And I'm gonna to try to click down here really quickly and see how long this takes. There it's done, 2.6 seconds. So it took about 2.6 seconds to move 10 gigabytes of data. Obviously, it looks like it's a little bit faster than that 3,000 megabytes per second roughly in there. So overall, that did really well. I mean, obviously, with that little bit of data, it's hard to actually get really accurate when I'm doing a little press like that that quickly. But you can see it's ultra fast, just moving small files like that, especially 10 gigs. All right, so the next one's going to be a lot bigger. This is the 50 gigabit per second test. Let's get this ready here. So obviously, you know, this is going to take a little bit longer, but it's going to give us a little more data. So I have 50 gigabytes of files here. I'm going to transfer them. Obviously, it's just not one single file. I'm going to transfer them over here. Click on that and I'm gonna click here. Let's see how long this takes. It took me even a second to get going there, but we'll see how long this takes here. We're moving pretty quickly. You can see it's up to around 25 meg or gigabytes transferred already out of 50, and we're still moving here. So we wanna hit around 15 seconds, I guess, and that would be somewhere in the range we're talking about. Let me see. Yeah, 15.4 seconds roughly in there. Obviously, it took me you know, maybe a microsecond to stop it. That's actually pretty good. So around 15.4 seconds to transfer 50 gigabytes of data. You know, that's still, that's even higher than 3,000 megabytes per second. We're probably around 3,200, somewhere in there. So it's really accurate, and it's actually getting a little bit faster than even Blackmagic. All right, here's the big one. This is the 100 gigabyte test. This one takes a little bit longer. Let's go ahead and get this moving here. So I'm going over here. So you can see I have 100 gigabytes of files in this folder over here. And uh, overall, this is going to take, you know, obviously we can do the math in this. This should take, what is it, like a little over 30 seconds or so, if as long as it doesn't slow down. So here I dropped it in. Let me just go ahead. I started the timer here. We can see everything moving here. For some reason, it's not showing me the actual transfer here. But let me go ahead and open this up. You'll see a couple things here. This might actually be better. It's already transferred a whole bunch of files in there. You can see the top four or five have already been transferred. It's only got four or five left there. I think four files it's got to continue to, to transfer. You can see that, the little area right there, right there. So you can see that. Um, basically, though, let's see. It's still going through a couple more here, and we're getting through them all. We're at only 27 seconds, though. So this is 100 gigabytes of data. And we're at 30 seconds. So let me just see here, 32 seconds right there. So I just stopped it, everything's done. 32 seconds for 100 gigabytes of data. That's pretty incredible. That's telling us that we're getting up 32, what is that, 32, that 3200 megabytes per second when we do the math in that, roughly somewhere in that range. So it is not slowing down at even at 100 gigabytes of data. And then finally, we just did another test about 20 seconds after that one, just to see if you know the heat of it would heat up and then it would not be able to do the test again and it would slow down. But we got the exact same thing, about 32.4 seconds on that last test. So I did back-to-back -back 100 gig files, or you know, a bunch of files, but 100 gigs at a time, and there was no slowdown. All right, so you saw how this performs, and I do think that the cooling, both active and passive, work really well here. Now, a lot of these things, after I'm doing, you know, especially 200 gigabytes of data transfer, they're really, really hot you know, to the touch. This thing barely was barely even warm. And uh, that's surprising for me. So I think actually the copper, the heat pad touching the copper, then the copper going to this fan. This is an active 30 millimeter, super smooth fan. I think it really makes a big difference. Also the construction of the outside of this, the full aluminum, very solid, heavy device here. All that stuff's bringing the heat out of this thing. So it does seem like it's working, you know, very, you know, very well for, for all the ones I've tested. All right, so let's wrap this up. This is the Grogear USB 4 enclosure. And uh, I gotta say, it's a huge plus. I mean, I think the active cooling and the passive cooling and then putting the money in with the copper, the fan and everything else is totally worth the money. The extra money, maybe it's an extra 10 bucks. Performs really well. I mean, I've only done a short-term test, like I said, but overall the thing has performed perfectly for me. And uh, you know, when you're moving 100 gigs in you know, roughly 32 seconds, you can't complain. I mean, if you get a little bit faster, a little bit less, depending on the drive you put in there, you're not gonna notice it that much. At the end of the day, it's just a great device overall. I recommend it um, you know, on my short-term product showcase. 
long term, again, I don't know. I always say that I just have to make sure it's clear. Grog here, check them out, and we'll talk to everybody in the next one. Peace.